Hello there. I'm Liana, a full-time comic artist and writer. You might have seen my work on things like TKO Tales of Terror or Star Wars Adventures. This series is for anyone in comics, fans and peers alike. Here, I sit down and talk to all my friends in the comic industry. Welcome. Hello, everyone. I am joined by Scott Brian Wilson. He's like... Uh, yeah, sorry, I waved. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Critically acclaimed DC uh, Pennyworth writer, Batman writer, many things. And we are also joined by uh, Jaslyn Stone, who did the marketing for True Cult. Yeah, I'm excited to be here and reminisce and get vulnerable and sappy and a little bit hellish. It's going to be great. Here is the the killer lineup of covers. Incredible. Graphic, Liana. You know. Look at all those covers. Graphic design nice is my burden. Thank you. You look so nice together, dude. Very well uh, planned throughout the whole team. Dude, okay. And Bernice Which... is the only one who made it on all four covers, too. Oh. Oh, shit, what do you yeah. Know? My girl, what do you know? Hell yeah. Oh, my God. I like that the last um, two definitely have all three. Which one's our favorite covers? Um, I got to say, I'm pulling it back up again. I want to say... I don't want to choose but i low-key love for only because it has gone through like four different iterations of the design ever since we started the first cover because i think originally we were gonna do like the first cover and then like a trade cover and then i was like eh, let's just do issue covers why not even though they're being uh released digitally and like i have special attachment to all of them But I think because the third one has like, you know, inside jokes on it and like I redrew it like four times and then like, I don't know, I sent it to all of you guys and was like, hey, what you thinking? And y'all were digging it. So the, the, the funny thing was when DC sent us the PDF of issue four, I opened it and I went, what the fuck is this? Because I hadn't seen the cover with the logo on it yet. (laughs) <laughs> I've been confused. Uh, it took because it looked like it looks completely different without the logo on it, right? When you just yeah. see the art, yeah. And I was really confused for a second, and then I was like, "Oh wow, this is this is pretty nice." What's y'all's favorites? I want to know. The, num- the number one, the number one cover is is my favorite. Dude, I don't know. I think two or four. It's hard though because I love the homage that three does to um, uh, Fargo. Fargo, thank you. I was like, to that little town, Fargo. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. Two's just so badass. And I just love her yeah. face. Yeah. yeah. But then the lighting on four is so good. And it's like got so many jokes. And then we like finally show like the, because I think it's the first time we show the full Burger Lord logo. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And like, I don't think people know this. We gotta put we gotta put it somewhere. It's like we like have like full branding guides for Burger Lord, both like retro Burger Lord and future Burger Lord, and like some of that stuff I think is in the in issue one, but like we yeah. went deep on the branding and lore of both Holy Cola and Burger Lord. Yeah, it's funny because when I because when I wrote when I wrote the first issue and Allison shows up, it talks in the script about how she's wearing an old style Burger Lord uniform which took me three seconds to think of and write. And then I was like, ah, fuck. Right. Cause then like Liana's like, well, what's the color scheme for the old one? I think I may have put in the, that the color scheme was like Brown and orange or something that was like totally different. Yeah. But, um, but then I was like, ah, shit, you know, like that's a whole other, that's a whole other element of design. And with Liana, she really thinks through everything closely, you know? So, so there ended up being like branding for like both, both versions on uh, a color scheme, there's a mm-hmm. whole uh, chart color scheme for everything. So that was really cool to see for as a writer, you know. My favorite part so of good. the series in general is like working with the whole team on like cool, fun, weird ways to like make the world as detailed as possible and expansive. So dude. Yeah. Like we got to do whatever the fuck we wanted with this series. And that's like one of the cool things that I think about like one working with other people who are as like dedicated and creative and enthusiastic as you are which the whole team like everybody has been excited about this um i think like one of our biggest fans is james who's the flatter on the book love it (laughs) yeah loves the series so much um 
but it's just been really fun to like have this kind of mentality behind this book which is like first and foremost we want to make like a great book and then second like we can do whatever the fuck we want as long as it doesn't hurt anybody and everybody's down and that is just like such a freeing mentality um definitely you have to like figure out how to like pay for things or make things or design yeah. things or you know reach out to press or whatever it is like you have to figure it out but it's like very freeing to not have to like adhere to like a you know 50 year backstory for a character or self-publishing uh, rules this is so fun rules. uh scott do you want to talk about like the experience of self-publishing versus like work for hire now that you're uh blowing up and are working for uncle bruce and stuff like that yeah i mean self-publishing fucking rules the fucking freedom it's amazing you know work for hire as everybody will say has its perks but um in terms of just being artistically satisfying and creatively satisfying um you know creator owned work self-published work um there's there's nothing that there's nothing that equals that just us having the freedom to do whatever we want in the book um to make it as long as we wanted to to put as much cussing in it as we wanted like whatever we wanted to do um put satanic do symbols all over everything yeah, we <laughs> put a fucking pentagram on the cover yeah. you know like um and just not have to worry about anybody fucking saying oh but we have to put you know you have to save room for ads or you have to do this or to, like just do whatever we want it's um it's amazing it was, it was it was great and i will do no room for ads more. means way more content which says yeah, a lot absolutely. about our page counts Absolutely. <laughs> that's why there's only four issues y'all yeah it's actually the length of uh five issues because the third and fourth issues are so long it actually ends up being the same length as if it were a five issue mm -hmm. do you want to talk about how or why that happened absolutely because I, re I remember a distinct point during the Kickstarter where, like, it funded and was doing really well and was do blowing all of our wildest dreams out of the water. And you were like, we could make this longer. Like, I just remember this very distinct moment in one of our meetings where you were like, we could make the story longer. And it seemed like you just started, like, doing all the math in your head. I think I just realized, like, you know, like, as a, as a writer – of comics you need the structure of a page count right that's the, really the only way to sort of mm -hmm. figure out how to tell the story is once you know how many pages you have but there's really something to be said for like like with issue four we finished it and i called leon and i was like we have to do another page and she was like yep i agree right yeah and i totally did, did. We, yeah we didn't, we didn't have to ask anybody we didn't have to get permission we didn't have to budget yes. anything. i said yeah that's I true. said we have to do another page and she she agreed and we did it so if you give me the space i will fill it up and i will always take more if you give it to me but um there really is something to be said for the freedom of really being able to just keep and it gives you a lot of freedom as well right like oh we want to add a you because we added a page if you remember in number one as well we we actually killed a page at the last minute and redid it the nine panel grid with marty sort of having the realization of what he had pulled off mm -hmm. that was originally a a different page and i think i realized it didn't work but like nobody said anything so i was like all right and then jaslyn was actually like hey i don't know man page nine kind of sucks and i was like oh yeah you're right all right well, somebody said, you know, no you didn't say it sucked you're like this doesn't feel like it fits here and you're right it didn't and i was like yeah. i was like oh you know so i just i called liana said hey look we got to fix this you know and um <laughs> there's just a lot of uh, a lot of freedom to just being able to like and, and, and a lot of it too i mean obviously like if you don't get along with your collaborators it's a lot more difficult right like, right um i've done i've done work for hire stuff where i i never even talked to the artist on the book you know it's really not fun you know it's like oh well there's some pages but because we have so much fun making this book it's very easy to be like hey we gotta add a page are you okay with that i, I made it really easy for you to draw you know, and she's like, yeah, let's do it. So um, I, 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 that, that's just something you're not going to get, you know, writing Spider-Man. Right. I think, too, part. like having a team that is willing to have input and like wants to give input, too, is really important. Like we gave everyone on the team essentially like willingness to like comment or much like how Jaslyn had the idea to be like, this page doesn't quite fit here or whatever, like. 
the whole team having that kind of like, uh, I guess, privilege all across the board, just because like, it's a group effort, obviously. And like, yeah, Scott wrote it. And yeah, I'm drawing it. But like, TK wouldn't be what it is without the entire team. You know what I mean? And everyone brings such a really good like strength to the whole series, which is why I think it did so well being self published. Yeah. I think when everybody feels like they're invested in it and valued and valued, you know, it brings an enthusiasm that maybe, you know, you don't get when you're on a, you know, some work for hire book, you know? Yeah. And that's why we have everyone's name on the cover. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why, uh, you know, I know it at, at DC in the old days, they didn't put colorists on the cover because they said no one has ever bought a book because of the colorist. Um, and then I think, you know, around uh, 10 years ago, that um, that attitude changed and they started putting, um, you know, colorist name on the cover. Marvel did the same. Um, but I, I don't get why people don't put the letterers on the cover, you know. Um, so for us, it was everybody's going on the cover. The flatter is going on the cover. I mean, the flatter is even credited in the book half the time, most of the time, probably, you know. Yeah. And the jazz is on the cover. Um, I just figured anyone who contributed um, should be on the cover. You know, um, I've even tried to put I've I've tried to have the editor's name put on the cover on on books before, but usually in work for hire, that's not allowed for like legal reasons. But yeah, the way I see it is everybody who touches it, you know, should should have a some some piece of, of pride in it and, and should get the um and should get the 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 thrill of having their name on the cover. I mean, it's fucking great. You know, you always mm-hmm. love to see your name. on the cover. We're all you know, we're all egomaniacs. So I think everyone that's in it, like. Everyone should have, like, a comicsology profile to be like, yeah, I worked on this comic. And, like, the way to do that, put you on the cover. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's the thing that makes sense, right? Like, Right. There was definitely a moment where people were like, oh, your name's on the cover. And I was like, yeah, because I worked on the book. Like, not realizing how unique and bizarre that was. And they were mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, cool. Because, you know, I was like, yeah. Right. Like, why wouldn't it be? Like, it makes sense. Yeah. Right. And you realize, like, like, how that is of you guys to just like be like your name's on the cover and you know you always uh talk about the whole team in interviews and whenever like the team's listed anywhere you guys always make sure that everyone's mentioned or credited yeah, we, try to, we try to we try to get everyone's name on it it doesn't always work but we try you know we try to at least mention everyone once every time we do an interview or something i was gonna say like and not only that but because we all have like contributed more than just like our main title of like work or whatever like Jaslyn helped me design, we designed this shirt together. Like she has helped design all of the merch because that's like yeah, one of our strong suits. That shirt. Yeah, a good, I mean, it made it 10 times better. You remember the first version I sent you of this? Awful, I was so like, bad. I was, like, I was like, this is that what's in my head. So bad. <laughs> I, so bad. I, I, yeah. So much. Thank you for walking me through that. Cause I was like, I am not an artist, but I know how this needs to look. Yeah. I, so Jaslyn like, came up with the whole, uh, the actual like saying, right? And then she, I, you kind of like art directed it, which was fun. Like I thought that was really fun. So okay, cool. <laughs> I felt like a dick. <laughs> no, I mean seriously, like it's uh, co- comics being like a collaborative effort, right? Like sometimes colorists go through revisions, stuff like that. That doesn't mean that I shouldn't go through revisions for this rad shirt because third time's a charm. Am I right? Like. Yeah. I mean, oh, same man, with designing the book, too. At some point. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Brett's sure done fan art, too. and we have uh, Dennis, who's done multiple layers of fan art at this point, Dennis. which is cosplaying, making a full burger track out of Legos, doing a full pixel art of a video game of Burger Lord. Like, what if you have done fan art for True Cult, please show us. Because I love all the merch pics. But seeing people cosplay with the employee shirts or drawings, just absolutely. Yeah, the 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 I gotta say when the when we when you sent me the picture of Cat cosplaying as Allison, like that's when the book got real to me. Really? Yeah, it's one of those weird things. It's like holy shit! Like it felt like I don't know. It was just one of those things where like wow, it really felt like you know, because someone who isn't attached to it at all spent time doing something because they liked it you know and like when you see that it's like oh wow holy shit um have either of you had a book that had such a like ravenous and 
like creative uh, fan base like this? No. She said Destroy had a lot of really cool uh, fan art and people that got like, I think one person started a cosplay and they started posting like work in progress online. But I don't know if they ever finished it. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had people tell me how shitty I am at writing Batman online. Like that's happened. Does that does that count? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's enthusiasm, at least, right? What do you? Yeah, that's you true. They did pay for your issue, so yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I don't fucking respond. That's good. That's the. Oh man, I don't. I think. Yeah, you're a better person than me. I think. Particularly, the reason why this fan base is so accessible is because we wrote a lot of really relatable real shit. It's not like a fantastical like thing that you know you can escape from. It's kind of like a slightly stretched, uh, very realistic fantastical thing that you can relate to and do yeah, every, a, every... an incredibly easy cosplay for. Uh, fast or food feel. fantasy, as yes. Fast food yeah, but fantasy. I mean every. Everybody has had or continues to have a shitty job that they hate or they don't feel respected, right? Like, yeah, I think it's something that you know anybody really can relate to because no matter where you sit on the org chart, to use corporate language, there's somebody ahead of you, and therefore you, you know, you're feeling pretty shitty about yourself, you know. So, what do you want Shriveled's legacy to be? I just want people to relate and read it and escape for a little bit and have a good time. And I hope that that really resonates with a lot of people. And if you want more from that, to, then to join the community, because I feel like the community is so great because we have fun times like this. Yeah, I mean, all that for sure. Like, I think the fact that people like it and don't have to, and they don't like it because they already know the characters. They don't like it just because they buy anything. This is Batman on it or whatever. Um, but they like it because they actually read it and like it is, I can't put into words like that feeling, you know, you occasionally get a reader who is clearly has read very closely and astutely and gets what you're doing. And that's just one of the best feelings, you know, it doesn't happen much, but it's really one of the best feelings. And for this book to have, you know, a small but dedicated uh, fan base. It's really special, um, and I, I, I'm really sort of humbled by it. But in terms of the legacy of the book, you know, I I want it to be the first of of many more to come, right? Like especially collaborations with Liana, like people to look back on and go, "Holy fucking shit, that was the first one. That's where it started." You know. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely for me i think that you know because i think we already we set the bar pretty high with this book like and i think part of that was because we didn't give a fuck and we were like we're just gonna do it you know mm -hmm. um and so having done that then you go oh fuck well what do you do for an encore right but instead of being terrified by it you can make it a, a challenge you know yeah i think you're right like it being the first of many that I'm hoping that we're known for in terms of like great collaborative projects that like speak to people. Like we made this for us. Yes. But we also made it for the fans and like to yeah, connect totally. with a reader over something so special yeah. like this. And for like people to be excited about seeing themselves in the book or like quoting a small part of issue two to me or like using right. something as an inside joke in between people that get it like that just means so much incredibly yeah. yeah for sure um what about so you, you mentioned just what's the what's oh uh i think it's kind of already started like i think i really enjoy that it's a book about apathy and kind of breaking through that and trying to like fight for something more that's how i always read it because i think that's really relatable and i feel like we kick-started this at the height of the scary part of the pandemic right i mean yeah. like we're still in the pandemic but it was like back when there wasn't a lot of information and um yeah. we didn't know what the comic book industry was going to look like and yeah. i think that we really just kind of like built our plane as we were going and decided to put on kickstarter and then it just kind of like was the right call um 
and I've talked to a lot of other people who are like interested in doing Kickstarter and it's like cite True Cult as being like the book that made them think, oh, I can do that too. Right? Like that yeah. it's like inspired other people to use Kickstarter as a platform to like launch their careers because you know, you get a lot of re rejections and there's nothing wrong with rejections, but at a certain point it's like, okay, like why am I waiting around for other people to like see the brilliance yeah. of my story? Why don't I just yeah. like go ahead Absolutely. and Absolutely. Fuck those people. Yeah. So I want I guess like I want Trickle's legacy to be like, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves. Like Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's gonna be yeah. fun and we're gonna be nice, but we're gonna have fun and our branding's gonna be impeccable. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's what I want. That's how I hope it's remembered. But I feel like you guys kind of like did a little Easter egg there where you talked about one of many. Are you working on more projects together? Do you have other stuff coming out in the future? We're actually working on two. Um, but we are primarily working on one right now. And it's it's really fucking cool. And I uh, hope it's going to be the second of many to come. So. Yeah, we have, we have, we have two more two more we're definitely going to do we know which one and then the one after that so we're gonna and they're both really different um so different from true cult too yeah yeah different from true cult and different from each other so hoping uh hoping we can really sort of set the bar and uh, keep sort of raising it with each one yeah hopefully what is in the future for true cult like is this it is this is this the end of True Call? Uh, what's what's in the future for the for the crew for the cultists? Well, should I take this one? Yeah, most definitely. On the advice of our uh, legal team, our army of lawyers that we retain at a very high hourly rate, <laughs> twenty five hundred dollars an hour. Uh, on their advice, six thousand six hundred sixty six. It's actually $6,666.66 an hour. Um, on the advice of our high-paid legal team, we cannot talk about the future of the book. Uh, we can't confirm or deny any rumors regarding it. Um, so you just have to sit back and wait and see if something happens. If something happens. It might. It could. Something could get announced at some point. It could. But our lawyers won't let us say our high paid legal team very, very. <laughs> what advice do you have for creators doing kickstarter get a team trust your team divide and conquer yeah i would say i would say just to be slightly more specific i would just say work out any legal details with your team beforehand and then be fucking realistic about what you want to do and what you want to raise and what you want to make um and then fucking go do it oh yeah jasmine the expert your answer i would say find your manufacturers before you launch your campaign that's a good call yes yeah yes and order it yeah, maybe ahead of time if you can if possible you can grab the only four issues uh, from start to finish at gumroad.com slash true cult, or you can go to truecultcomic.com to learn more about the series and like kind of see some cool stuff and then perhaps entice you to, uh, to read the series if this didn't already. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Hope you have a wonderful night and, uh, read comics, Stan Satan. Satan.